What's going on, everybody? Rich Butler here. Thank you for taking the time to download episode two of Toys and Tech of the Trade, your one-stop shop for toys, tech, and talk with some assembly required. Uh, This week's episode is very special. Uh, Sam and Emily Cataldo from Severio's Pizza Room are our guests this week. But before we jump into the interview, I did want to get some housekeeping out of the way first. Um, I know we owed you guys an episode uh, two weeks ago, but... I have a little one on the way, and that kind of throws things a little off, especially with all the doctor's visits and everything else. We weren't able to schedule interviews, but we will be covered for the next few episodes. In addition to our interview with Sam and Emily uh, dropping on this episode, we are also going inside Rageworks and talking to some of the members of our team and sharing the toys and tech of their trade. Uh, First up is going to be Jimbo Slice, who has been highly requested by many of you that are fans of the Rageworks network. Uh, Jimbo and I, of course, do the variant issue together, and um, he will be one of the first from the Rageworks team that will be stepping up to bat, followed by our very own Slick. Uh, He and I obviously work together on My Take Radio. Slick is our games editor and oversees the bulk of our video game content on the Rageworks site. So we're going to take a deep dive into the tech he uses and the toys that he's obsessing over. And, of course, the other members of our team will be coming up, Jay Santi, Matt Olski, and, of course, Josie's boy as well, plus a host of other different talents uh, from both the creative side with content creation like what we do, plus a few others that are definitely a far departure. But those guys will be coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, With regards to the release schedule, as I said, we're going bi-weekly with Toys and Tech of the Trade with a release date every sat, you know, every other Saturday, alongside some of our other weekly shows, including Call Me When It's Over, uh, Turnbuckle Tabloid, The Variant Issue, and many others. So keep an eye out for that every other Saturday on iTunes and also via the RageWorks Network, which you can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify, plus iHeartRadio as well. All right, that's going to cover the housekeeping for this episode. Let's toss it over to Sam and Emily and learn about the toys and tech of their trade. All right, I'm sitting here with Sam and Emily Cataldo from Severio's Authentic Pizza out in Massapequa here in the beautiful state of New York. We're going to chop it up, find out what gear they use, what gadgets, what tech um, they use to not only run their small business, but also give us some of the best pizza on Long Island. Uh, Sam and Emily, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Um, You know, you guys have been in business since 1967. Uh, The pizzeria was an extension of A&S Pork Store. Um, Let's start with that first. You know, give us a little background on how how the pizzeria spun off from the pork store. What got your family to even get into that business in the first place? Sure. The pork store opened in 1967, like you said. My dad was an immigrant from Italy, um, came to the United States in 1960, worked with a gentleman named Mr. Anthony Shikitano, um, for many years prior to opening up the first A&S pork store on Long Island here in Massapequa. So it was the number four store in the chain of many. Three were in Brooklyn and this was the first on the island. It was store number four. And we've been here since then. It's our 51st year in business. Wow. And, um, uh, thank God the community has been very supportive. Um, we have wonderful families that are, I think it's now four generations of families that shop in our store. Um, and we have our third generation of family working in the store. So we are very blessed to be here all these years. And now it has spun into, um, opening up the doors of Severios in 2015. Uh, we wanted to add a new product to offer to the customers, um, because there were other stores that 
were local to where these other customers live, where they wouldn't come up to the, you know, North Massapequa to do some shopping. So we wanted to give them a new product to come to try and get them to come back to the pork store to shop. So we offered the pizza, not realizing that in almost four years, it would be a business, business of its own. And, um, we're really thankful for, um, all the good luck we've had. I think that by doing one stop shopping, I think it's the right way to go. I think that that business model works, especially, um, you know, with, with restaurants and a lot of small chain supermarkets. Everybody's trying to get into it. It's good that you guys are not only doing that, but leveraging all the great ingredients that you guys have. You guys have all fresh ingredients, a lot of imported ingredients. Um, you know, how did, how did your family get into it? Get into that? Like what? What said, hey, I want to open up a chain pork store? Sure. Well, um, it goes way back to when my father was only nine years old and he began his uh, career as um, a gentleman, a young boy really selling produce in Italy. So he went town to town, horse and buggy at nine years old, um, supporting his family uh, because my grandfather had a car accident and was severely injured and was unable to work. Wow. So my father was the oldest son at nine and had to go to work. Wow. So he went town to town selling fresh produce and it was always fresh and quality stuff that he would buy from the farms and literally horse and wagon for hundreds of miles up and down the coast of Italy selling fresh produce. So when he came to the States and was offered this opportunity to become a uh, part of the food industry, of course, he, you know, grabbed the bull by the horns and did what he knew best and offered fresh quality ingredients to the community. And um, still, we pride ourselves on only offering high quality, fresh ingredients on all the things we sell in the pork store and also on the ingredients we use on our pizza. Everything is made fresh daily. Tomatoes are cranked in the morning. Gra the, the grated cheese is grated in the morning. The dough is made fresh daily. The mozzarella has been made fresh every day for 51 years. So we've continued that legacy that my father has handed down to us to make sure quality and of course customer care is like the priority, um, for our business. And it's been, uh, it's been very successful. Did you wake up? And pretty much you, you knew from the start that you were going to get into the family business. I know a lot of people that are multi-generational business owners. It's always like, Hey, this will be yours someday. And some people, they don't want to do it. And some people do. Were you mm -hmm. naturally inclined? Well, not really because, <laughs> uh, my father, um, you know, had, was blessed with, with me as a daughter, but not as a son. So, um, I was never allowed to work in the store as a little girl. Um, it was mainly a man's, man's butcher shop, uh, back in the day when I was a little girl growing up. But then, um, uh, my husband came on board in 1983 and he, um, sort of took over management of the store recently and our son is there. So, and I am there in the pizza side. I don't work in the pork store side, but I do, um, some holiday cooking for the pork store. Nice. So I'm, um, you know, we knew it would stay in the family once my husband became very involved in the, in the business. And, um, you know, we're very fortunate that we had this opportunity and he's very happily employed there and is a partner there. And my son is now employed there and he's hopefully one day will be a partner there. And, you know, hopefully for the generations to come, the store will stay there. Um, it's, it's a great family endeavor. It definitely is multifaceted. It takes a lot of dedication, um, and, you know, it, it's a whole family endeavor for sure. Um, I'm going to toss it over to Sam. Were you always inclined to want to get into the food industry or was it something where you being with Emily, it kind of just absorbed, it kind of, it kind of just pulled you in? Yeah, that's more like <laughs> pulled me in because before I met Emily, I was, uh, <clears throat> I used to work in, in Manhattan in the, uh, the old New York Coliseum. I was a teamster and, uh, I just started driving the high low, which is the forklift. And then what happened over there was the summertime, it got slower. And, uh, there wasn't that many shows going on. My job was to set up the shows, the car show, the boat show, the toy shows, the exercise and fitness show. That was our, my main job. Like at the Javits. Right. Now it's the Javits, but before it was the, the New York Coliseum. That's okay. the same union that I was in is in the okay. Javits Center now. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. Learned something new. <laughs> yeah. So, so then, uh, I was dating Emily and her dad asked me one day, I was over there for dinner and he asked me if I wanted to come work at the store. I said, I have a job. I said, I don't know if I can 
you know, just leave my job and come work at the store, but I'll try because now the summertime, it gets slower. And, and fortunately, the pork store gets busier in the summer. So I could have used the help. And then, uh, once I tried it, I knew that was it. I <laughs> never, I never went back to the, to the union. And I, uh, been there since 1983. It's be 35 years this wow. year. So I was, you know, while, while doing research for this interview, I saw that you, um, that you, you have to become a certified PCOLO. Right. So, you know, tell me a little bit about that because how did, how do you get certified? How does that work? Well, cause that's, that's, that's I'll intriguing. Tell you the reason why I wanted to get certified was we went to Italy, my wife and I, with our family, we went to, uh, Naples and we were with our family and we had pizza in this one restaurant. That was in Italy's theater district. And our cousin Alfonso and Geraldina, they took us to this restaurant and the pizza was just fantastic. So I looked at my wife and I said, we have to do something like this at home. If we can do this at home, it'll be a home run. This pizza is amazing. So we came back from Italy, did a little research. I It didn't work out the first year. I couldn't find anybody or really could find the right person that I wanted to learn from, I should say. Then about two years later, or two, two and a half years later, a good friend of mine said, listen, I have somebody you can call. <laughs> and uh, his name was Roberto Caparuccio, and he owns Don Antonio's Starita. It's on 50th Street and between 8th and 9th Avenue in Manhattan. Oh, I know that place. And, it, and it's funny because while researching, I said, wait a minute. This place was on the Food Network. Yes, yes it was. And um, Jeffrey Zakarian from the Food Network was there. Yes. And they were talking about it. And when I saw that, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> and I saw how it came full circle. So that's really awesome because yeah. that place, you know, it's – you either have to be a foodie or you got to do your homework to know about that place because it's a hidden gem. It's yeah. it's tremendous that, that, you got, that you learned. Yeah, no. And Roberto took me on right away. A friend of mine asked me to make the introduction for me to him. And, uh, the, the, the best part of the whole thing was my daughter had gotten married on June 20th. That was supposed to be my last day of, of school. So of course I couldn't go to school that day because my daughter got married. So I spoke to the teacher and Roberto and he said, come on about it. Come back Monday and Tuesday and we'll finish. And when I went there, I think it was Monday or the Tuesday, Mr. Don Antonio himself from Italy mm -hmm. was from in Naples. the restaurant. From, from Starita in Naples. Holy cow. He saw me making pizza, and he came over to me next to the pizza bench and was actually making pizzas with me. And wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty I gotta cool. I got to say, it was pretty cool. That's that was like, it was a legend. Yeah, that's you, that, know? you know that's that's like taking batting practice with Babe Ruth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it exactly. was pretty good, you know. And then we went to Italy last summer, and we went to Starita. We went, we visited my cousins in Naples, and we met at Starita, and we had pizza there, and it was really um, awesome to have pizza there, where he um, was the man that actually started the the whole process of uh, Neapolitan style pizza. That's yeah. That's so it was insane. really really cool. So, you know, you were talking about all the fresh ingredients, milling the tomatoes. So what's, and, I, and I'll start with, with Emily first, what's, what's an average day for you? An average well, day yeah, for, from... for, for, for running, for running the business for you. Okay. An average day is anywhere from 12 to 14 hours of work. Wow. Um, yeah, it starts, um, early in the morning. The staff gets in and of course sets up the shop for the morning bringing out patio furniture, you know, making sure everything is stocked for the day. Um, we pull out the dough and make sure it gets to temperature because it has to be out three hours prior to making your first pizza. Wow, did uh -huh. know that. Yeah. So more dough is made. The mozzarella is cut. Um, we make sure we, gr you know, grind our tomatoes through the tomato mill. It's all done by hand. Um, we make sure that the grated cheese is grated. We use Parmigiano Reggiano and we use Pecorino Romano. So both cheeses are, are grated in the morning, fresh. Um, the basil 
is all plucked, washed, and ready for the day. Wow. Um, it's all done by hand. So it's not like we have a machine that does it for us. We do it all by hand um, and with care. Um, meatballs are made in the morning fresh. Eggplant is breaded and fried in the morning fresh. Mom sauce is made a couple of times a week. So that's a job in itself. So that's all before our opening at 1130. And then we start greeting our guests and, you know, people come and dine in. They sit outside when the weather allows. Um, they're ordering pizzas to go. So it's quite a process. I mean, we're very lucky. We have a great team of kids that work with us. Um, both Sam and I are there often. And Paolo is another pizzaiolo right from Naples. So he works with us. Sebastian is a young pizzaiolo in training. He's doing a great job. Um, we have a great group of people working with us. We're very fortunate. But it is an endeavor. And then we do close early because our day starts early. Right. So, you know, our doors during the week close at 8 o'clock. Friday and Saturday we close at 8.30. Sunday is back to 8 o'clock because we start there very early in the morning. So by that time, like I told you, it's already a 12, 14-hour day. Wow, that's... So it's time for us to come home and rest, for us to do it again tomorrow. That's um, But we do pride ourselves on quality and freshness. I mean, everything that we offer is food that I would offer my family that was coming over for dinner. So I'm feeding every guest that comes as if they're part oh, of our family, beautiful. and it's fresh. Nothing is old. That's that's amazing. And now, Sam, with you being that you 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 do a lot more hands-on work what's you what's your day like i mean it's a 12 to 14 hour day yeah 12 but, to but i know that you're you're in the trenches a little longer yeah than that. yeah you know it's 12 14 hours sometimes 15 hours for myself but uh you know, I, I go in the morning every morning we make mozzarella that's first thing you do in the morning is we make mozzarella that's every day the best mozzarella is a day or two old because you don't want the mozzarella to, our mozzarella we make is very creamy. It's very fresh. So you can't put a fresh piece of mozzarella on the pizza because it become all milk. Yep. So what we do, we put it in the refrigerator. It dries up. And a day, the next day or two days later, we actually cut it and use it for the pizza. Nice. Uh, that's what, then once I make, I cut the mozzarella, once I make the mozzarella, I should say, then, uh, I'll cut the day before's, I'll make the bowls of mozzarella. Then by that time, Paolo's usually strolling in, and uh, we get the day going. Paolo gets the oven on. The oven takes about an hour to come to temperature. We cook our pizzas at 900 degrees, so the, our oven weighs almost 6,000 pounds. So the oven's very well insulated. And it's imported also. I, imported I, from Naples, yes. It's a Mario Acunto oven. A little history about that was the Acunto family started making pizza ovens in the 1800s. So what happened was the two brothers, I think it was uh, uh, Salvatore, no, Mario, I'm sorry, and Gianni, they split up at two separate companies. We happened to buy a Mario Acunto oven, which is a very good oven, and so was a Gianni Acunto oven. They're both very good ovens, top quality ovens in Naples. Uh, our oven was shipped from Naples to my store. Uh, again, it weighs 5,900 pounds. So that oven usually cooks at about 850 to 900 degree pizzas. That's how hot the oven is. Overnight, the next morning, when we open up, the oven is still 550 degrees. Mm -hmm. it you can never, make bread. It never really... You could bake bread in the morning. ...cools down. So at that point, you can bake bread in the oven if you want. You could uh, cook other things in the oven. But uh, we cook our pizza, like I said, at 900 degrees. And uh, it takes the oven about an hour or 45 minutes to get the temperature because it's so hot already. And uh, then we, st I stock the we stock the wood. Like Emily said before, we, we pluck all the basil and get the day going. Do you pick a particular wood, a slow burning, a rapid yes, burning? Yes, we, we use two woods. We use, I use oak and ash. Ash is more of a, it's a faster burning wood and it's more of a flame. The oak is uh, more dense and it's more for heat. Nice. Yeah. Now, when, when that oven was brought over, um, what did, how long does, does an oven like that take to be constructed within the, you know, within your, because the way your store is laid out, it's almost built into the structure of the store. So, <laughs> right. how, did, how long did that take? Well, you see, 
we had everything built prior to the oven coming in. Right. Then we just we put it together after the oven came. It was built in pieces and sections. The counter was right. built in in sections. Ah, the okay. oven came over in one piece. Holy cow! Yes, <laughs> one it came piece. Over in one piece. The oven and it's brought into the store with a special forklift. Has to be a ten thousand pound rated forklift to bring the oven in. And uh, once the oven was put in place, it's uh, it takes ten days to cure the oven. What, what I mean by that is you have to warm up the oven slowly because you don't want the oven to crack. You oh. see. The oven that we use is made with special bricks and special mortar. The mortar that they use is, it's, uh, it's a lot of water in it because it's clay. And you, what you want to do is you want to dry the oven slowly. Mm-hmm. You don't want to put too much heat in the oven because the oven, the water inside of the bricks will start to boil. And if it expands, the gases are going to crack the stone. It's like when people make clay pots. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. So exactly. the increments were by pound, pounds of wood. We had measured out pounds of wood and increments of pounds would raise the heat, the temperature gradually for 10 consecutive days. Wow. So we had to stay there. Couldn't miss a day. That's yeah. a science in itself. It is. We had, it came with a, a manual and we had to follow the manual every day. We had to turn the page and read how many pounds we had to weigh it and put it in and every, when it would die out, then you'd have to put more wood. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that took, that, that must days. have affected it, you know, because like anything else, we, you make a plan and you're like, oh, this is what we're, this is what we're shooting for. We stood with it. We, <laughs> we, even, we stuck with Emily it. Emily and I even went there on, uh, we went there on New Year's it Day. It was New Year's Day. We Me were there. We went there. We had we New spent Year's the day. Eve at the house. I did my, mm-hmm. my uh, curing for New Year's Eve. And the next morning we had to be there. I think it was 10 o'clock. And we were there. And we were there at 10 o'clock in the morning, her and I. And I made my, uh, I made my fire. You start off with, like Emily said, you start with one pound of wood mm-hmm. for about four days. And once you start the fire, the fire will, will dies down. After an hour and a half, it dies down. You got to start it again. Mm-hmm. You had to make four fires per day. Oh, you had wow. to make for 10 days straight. But, but we did it. It did was it. fine. It was on fun. Top of, on top of doing everything on else. Top top of of doing, job, on top of yes. the job, exactly. Right. On top of my job, yes. And, and that's the part know. he left out. And back <laughs> in the morning. In those days, I did, I did everything. Back in those, I mean, I did everything. Crash course, you gotta be, cra- you gotta be cross trained in it all. Well, it the stop. thing is, he would arrive at the store anywhere between seven and seven thirty in the morning, and he'd do the mozzarella. Like he said he'd make fresh batches of mozzarella in the morning. But then, before he opened up the pizza place, before ten thirty, when he'd go over to the pizza side to get that ready, he already did three hours of work on the butcher shop. So setting up the showcase, making any orders that were called in prior, maybe. Um, Making rib roasts or cutting steaks or cutting chicken cutlets or, you know, doing some ordering. So already he had to do half a day's work prior to opening up the pizza section. Oh, wow. So that's why we do close and, early and too. Back in those days that we had, I mean, pizza was only me and my wife. That's yeah. That's what it was. It was him and I. You know, I'll tell you a story. I mean, this is part of, you know. The party of the beauty of our is, story. <laughs> this is something you'll hear is when we open up our our pizzeria, Emily's mom passed away on December 15th. Oh, jeez. 2015. No, 2014. 2014. Yeah. And then we opened up our pizzeria in, in January of 15. So mom was only passed away, not even a month. And so none of us were sleeping. Emily wasn't sleeping. I wasn't sleeping. Mm-hmm. Worried about the pizzeria. Mom just passing away. It was just, you know, you were wired pretty a little tough tight. time, you know? Yeah. So I would, you know, like one o'clock in the morning, I would say, uh, I said, Emma, you up? And she'd say, uh, hmm. yeah, I'm up. What's up? I said, listen, you think we'll ever sell 10 pizzas a day in the pork store? I mean, in, in the pizza store? She goes, 10 pizzas? She goes, ah, maybe we'll sell 10. You know, we have good customers. So then, you know, maybe 2.30 in the morning now, I say, hey, are you up? <laughs> and she says, yeah. I'm up. I'm up. I says, uh, think we'll ever sell 25 pizzas a day? And she goes, I don't know about 25. She says, maybe on the weekend we'll sell 25, but I don't know about during the week. So this was going on. Everybody knew these two questions. My best buddy next door, Jimmy, I go to his house and say, Jim, think we'll ever sell 10 pizzas? He was the only guy that had a lot of optimism. confidence in us. He, he goes, was yeah, optimistic. Man, you're going to kill it. You're going to yeah. crush it. Yeah, he was and right. And I said to him, 
but you think we'll ever sell 10 pizzas? And he'd say, You wanted yeah, that number, you wanted you know? that validation. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you it was, know? it was an uncertainty because Massapequa has so many pizzerias. And, uh, although we do sell pizza, I don't, still don't consider us a pizzeria. Nope. I always refer to our little business as a pizza room, um, because we sell Neapolitan style pizza and it's not really an American pizza place at all. So tell everyone, think of your American pizza and then get it out of your mind because this is a totally new experience and an authentic Italian experience that you're going to have. And, um, it was a little scary because we didn't know how that would be accepted in a community of pizza people in Massapequa that are used to traditional American pizza. So it was very unnerving because we didn't know if they would get it. Every other pizzeria sells it by the slice. We don't. We sell Neapolitan pie. It's small pizza, so it comes out by the pie. So that was an issue. I was like, will they accept this? Will they catch on to this? Will they like this? Will they accept it? And, um, you know, it was a lot of, of worried at first, not realizing that we didn't have to worry about it at all. Um, like Sam said earlier, it was just him and I on a soft opening. We just said, today's the day. It was January 23rd. We're going to open the door, the it's middle door night. to the pork store That's that connected right. the little pizza room to the pork. So we opened up the door and just the customers that came into the pork store to shop would stick their head in the door and say, Hey guys, what's up in here today? And he'd say, I'm making pizza. You want one? And we didn't have boxes folded. I was folding a box as the pizza was coming out of the oven. We sold 62 pizzas. 62 the first pies day. the first wow. day. Without yeah. an advertisement, without a menu, we made margarita. Yeah, that's how it's done. We had <laughs> one can of tomatoes cranked. That's it. Which only makes about maybe 20 pizzas. We had little mozzarella cut up. I was putting... Like I told you before, you can't put hot mozzarella on pizza. Well, but I had that to, day we did because no, we didn't I know. Ran out of mozzarella we had no idea to. what to expect. Yeah. So day one was great. So day two, we're all pumped because like, yes, everyone likes the pizza. Terrific. Day two, just me and Emily, him and I, and we maybe cranked two bowls of tomatoes <laughs> that day and maybe had a few boxes folded. Um, but we sold a hundred and two, two pies. Wow. On day two, and we looked at each other and said, oh, my God. We're on to something. What are we going to do? We need help because we can't do this alone. So we have a young girl came in. <laughs> Her name was Christy. She was our first worker. Yeah. Really, really, really nice kid. Really kid. She helped us out. She and jumped she right in. she comes in and she goes, <laughs> you need help? We said, yes, go in the back. Grab an Grab apron. Grab an apron. You're hired. <laughs> on the spot. Absolutely. You're and hired. we all learned together. The three of us learned together. You know, I knew good. nothing. She knew less. <laughs> My wife knew less than that. So it's a good learning experience for us. Well, that, that brings me to what you were saying before. You were saying that you're doing all the, all the butcher, all mm -hmm. the butchery, everything else. To that point, you, nobody had taught you butchery either, right? Like you were learning. With yeah, her, with, with I actually, yeah. my father-in-law taught me a lot. Oh, okay. I didn't know nothing about that's, it. That's what I was going to say. I so nothing you, about butchery. So you became a full on. <clears throat> not only did you become a PCOLO, but also a full on butcher. Absolutely, all in the same in the same. In the same, uh, yeah. He learned how to make mozzarella. So you basically yeah. learned two trades in one shot. For the most part, yeah. 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 Thirty five years, yep. Because think yep. about it: if you if people become people become butchers, and that's a trade in that's its own. That's a trade, exactly. Right. So right. so you, right. That's that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and and there's a third man. part that he does that nobody really knows that he does, but he does all the pasta, ravioli. Oh, come all on. that he does all the homemade pasta. He makes all the homemade mac ravioli. That was all self taught though. That nobody told me. Really? That I was self taught. Yes, I uh, had a guy that used to uh, work with us, and uh, I went back there to to learn. I'm a very Hands-on, very good learner. I really do. And uh, I went back there, and I was watching this guy make ravioli, and uh, I just wrote everything down. I had it all memorized. And when when I could, I would write the things down: how many eggs the guy put in, how much pounds of flour the guy used, and and I was like self-taught because what happened was an issue with the guy. We had a we had to let them let the ravioli guy. We had to let him go. So then. And who's gonna make ravioli? So I, I guess I'm making ravioli. There you go. Ravioli, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but till today, I I do everything in the store. And the 
most thing I do that nobody knows about, I'm the mechanic. Something breaks, I fix it. Ravioli machine breaks, I fix it. So it's very, very rewarding uh, business that I'm in. It's really, it's good. Well, you were saying that, and well, Emily mentioned before that you have a, a PCO on training. So now you're passing those skills on. Are yes. You, so now you're you're the teacher, and now you have an apprentice now, huh? Absolutely. He's really good. This kid's good. I like this kid. It, and and, and how'd you get him? He came in looking for a job. That was it. Actually, you know what? We had a our one of our good our our head server. His name was Joe T. And uh, Joe T was with us for a while, and Joe T was leaving. He had to go back to school. I said, what do you mean you're going to school? Like, you know, this is me? school. This what kid is, Joe T was, he's amazing. I love this kid. And uh, so he actually said, I have a friend that wants to work. And it was Sebastian. And uh, that's it. But Sebastian, was, he knew a lot more than I thought he would. He knew, Did his homework, huh? He knew some, you know, he knew how to make pizza. Never my style pizza, but he made American pizza before. I mean, just had to show him, you know, our way. I mean, he caught on really quick, the kid. And the kid's a, he does big, a good job. big help. He's he a big does a good job. He's a hard worker. He's a nice boy. Family is a the good family, good good people. And uh, you know what? Everyone that works in the place. I have, I have Joe Bronco that works with me. He's our second oh, person Employee. we have a hire. <laughs> and he's still there. Yeah. Wow. And Gio. And you have Gio. A bunch, yeah, of a bunch of girls that are waitresses with me. Now, it's all good. My daughter-in-law, Jamie, my my son's wife, she works with us on Fridays. Nice. So it's a so you keep it in the family. Yeah. But you try. also give people opportunities. Also. Absolutely. You, know, you try to pay. You try to pass those skills on. Absolutely. You know, of course. Uh, you know, me, Seb, and my son. I could see us uh, doing some stuff in the future together. All three of us. You know, we're going to try to do more than one place. Nice. Now, you know, Emily was talking about. You know, the business growing, you guys bringing people in. You also had to learn the business end quick, keeping the books, doing, you know, all, you basically had to learn human resources on the fly too, right? You know what? Our, <laughs> um, our philosophy is it's basic. I mean, it's not like, um, we're using computers. Yeah, we have no POS system. I, really? No, oh, no. none. That, that was I question, am like, an old guys- fashioned paper and pen type of girl. Keeping the books. I, the, the right li- I like, don't want to depend on a computer. Okay. I like to have papers and pens and a file system, binders, whatever. I file everything. I could flip a page and know exactly how many pies we sold on that day. Um, it, it's just, um, old, old, old school. I, I like it better than, um, a lot of the technology stuff. Like we you still use, um, an order notepad with, with the waitress will come over right. and take your order with a pen and a paper, a pen and a pe- pencil. Paper to pencil. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's just old school, and that's what works for us. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's funny because you know one of the, one of the things we do on the show is talk about the 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 tech and and the toys that go into running mm-hmm. your business and the fun. You know, it's not every day that you hear that it's a completely analog business mm-hmm. that's been in business for this long, right? And everything is kept meticulous. I mean, I've been in the store. And everything is, is by the numbers. And it's, it amazes me just hearing that. I hear I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe they just put everything in QuickBooks or something no. behind the scenes. Everything is in a, it, yeah. Wow. Everything's by hand on paper. That's yep. tremendous. Yep. yep. And, and you've never, and you've never said, eh, I should, I should digitize this stuff. Like nope. you prefer just keeping it that I way. Mean, we're going to need a POS system eventually. Don't get me wrong. Uh, right. We're definitely going to need one. Uh, at the rate you guys are growing. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. It, it, it'll be good because I know I'll pick a good one. I know I'll do my research, you know, I'll pick your brain a little bit. That's it. <laughs> but as far as technology goes, now that we're on the topic of technology, we do use technology for our advertising Yep, via that was, Instagram and Facebook and all the social media outlets. That was my next. That we was exactly, do use those skills. Um, hell of and, a segue. You saved, <laughs> me, you saved me having to even segue into that. There and you go. The, you know, one of the things that I've grown to admire about how the two of you approach this business is that a lot of people don't understand that, you know, consumption of, of food and hospitality is, is evolving. It's not. 
oh, let me put a, a an announcement in the penny saver and an ad in the Newsday and, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a placard outside. Like, there's more to it. And mm-hmm. as much as we are connected now, that plays a huge part. I mean, you know, every time someone goes to your establishment, hell, I've been guilty of it. You know, you snap a picture of that mm-hmm. pizza. Hey, where's this? Oh, it's here. And, you know, oh, you tag the photo. You, you put the geolocation next to, you know, someone wanders in. I think that that's a, that's the art form that still a lot of businesses aren't comprehending that that's where it's going. You know, gone are the days where you'd pay, you know, $50,000 for a 30 second commercial that would play once at 2 a.m. and you'd hope for the best and you'd sit there with your fingers crossed like, oh man, this is it. We paid for this commercial. We're yeah. off to the races. You don't need that anymore. Not at all. You know, it, the, the advance in technology has made it tremendous. And I think you guys have leveraged it in such a way that for me, just as, as a, as a techie, I, I appreciate it and I admire it because you, you jumped in head first, like, Hey, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to self taught. I, well, I didn't, not say, a few you know, months you ago, that, you know, when we first no, no, of met course, you, of course. You know? I mean, yeah, a few months ago, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. Of put on that yourself. A hundred percent. Thank you for. Yeah. Right, I mean, we're me. learning as we go and it's just been, um, a good, I want to say how many months since we really about five. about five months that we really um dove into this whole philosophy, which um was introduced to us mainly by uh, Gary V. Of course, um, we had this chance opportunity to sit with him, and um, you know, I had a lot of questions for him, and he answered them very honestly and um, gave us some really great advice as far as using social media platforms to get. Um, the word out there that we are there and our product, let people see and learn about what we're about. Um, and of course the YouTube channel that we are on and now we're having the opportunity to sit with you tonight. So there are a lot of opportunities that came up these past five months that have sort of led us to this path where we now feel comfortable. Um, and it's exciting to, um, you know, have the media team come in once a month to video us, which is awesome. And they yep. put together our YouTube video for us. And I use those clips to post weekly, which is awesome. Um, and it's really been a great experience, learning experience, because you're never too old to learn. That's it. Here I am, 51, and I'm, you know, doing all this and getting better at it every day and experimenting with taking pictures and videos on my phone not even realizing I could do some quality stuff off my iPhone. It, it gets, now I know I can. Um, and learning the editing and it's just been a great experience. We have the, you know, the, the two kids that come in there, it, Joe and Rick, I think for the, from uh, RJ media, they show us like they'll come in. Yeah. They do their thing, but they help us behind mm-hmm. the scenes. They help us like, Hey guys, take the picture this way. Use the phone that way, and you know, yeah, they're awesome. They're they're two good kids that really, you know, they helped us too. They helped us also, you know. So, me, I'm just a thankful person. I, I, I'm very thankful for everybody that helps me. You know, I, I really am, and uh, I can't thank everybody enough that really put their time and effort into giving us a shot. You know, because we were. You know, we're, it's scary. We're supposed to be like this. It know? is scary. It's scary going the into unknown, a business. You know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, in New York, there's a hustle for everybody, and if you can't find a way to make money in New York, something is wrong. Right. But going into the food business, the hospitality business, there's there's such a huge turnover. There's so many different variables. You have you know codes, everything you have to of abide course. by. You know, just a certain quality and a certain standard, and you know, you, the, the two of you both try to really push that standard. Every pizza comes out. I've, you know, you inspect yeah. it. I mean, when I ate there, you yeah. know, you look at that pie on the way out before it even hits 100%. the plate before it gets to that table. You know, a lot of places you go, you buy a pizza. Yeah. What do you want? Right, two slices. Here you go. And then that's it. And I think that fostering personal relationships, people remember that because guess what? Everybody remember the worst thing they ate. Mm-hmm. Everybody exactly. remember the worst restaurant they went to. Everybody will remember that. They could have a hundred great experiences, but that one bad waiter right. or that one bad dish yep. and that's it. That's you it. You know, we're fortunate. We get we actually get phone calls from people that say, Wow, this pizza was delicious that we had tonight. It was amazing. It's the best pizza that I've that I've ever eaten. You know, thank you. Because you know, you so, like you just said it, you're so used to hearing the negativity of people that normally you don't hear something good come out of people anymore. It's always like you said, it's negative. And we actually get 
quite a few. So many. Phone calls back. People take the pizza out. Or as they're even the eating there, they go, wow, this is the best pizza that mm-hmm. I've eaten in a long time. Or we just came from Italy. This pizza tastes just like the pizza that I had in Italy. <laughs> and it's a great feeling. And it a makes hell of an something, endorsement. You know? It is. I mean, people take the time, which is very humbling to me, um, that they take the time to really write reviews because we never did that. Like, We've eaten in millions of restaurants and we've, you know, never think to like leave a review until we found out what Yelp was. Before we opened Severio's, we did not know what Yelp was nope, because that's, that's important. We had no idea what it was. A customer told us that we had reviews on Yelp and we need to claim our name. And yep. I had no idea what the hell this lady was talking about. That's it. So I called Allie, our youngest daughter who was at NYU at the time. And I said, Allie, there's this thing called Yelp and I need your help with it. She goes, mom, it's an app. I said, okay. I said, well, when you come home, I need your help with this because I have to claim my name. And I don't know what that means. She goes, okay, I'll come home. So she came home and she helped us claim our name and establish a business Yelp account where I could respond to the reviews, to all the reviews. And I do every single review we've had so far has a response by me. That is super important. And that's something that so many businesses and that's one piece of wisdom people can take out of this. Respond, respond to your reviews. Yeah. Yes. Good yeah. and bad. We because have. that's And shows. I do. I respond. And luckily, we have very few negatives. And I don't even think there are any. Maybe there was one person that was not pleased. Well, you can't please um, everybody. You can't please too. everyone. Yeah. You know that. But we have <laughs> a five-star rating on Yelp, which everybody that comes in tells me is unheard of. Damn so right. I have to uh, – I don't we really know. We have but reviews and still have five, five stars. Five stars. So it's amazing. Then another customer came and told us we're on TripAdvisor. So I was like, okay. Then another customer said, um, you got to claim all of those TripAdvisor, Facebook business. Right. There's so many that we don't know that we didn't even realize. So, um, but I really appreciate that the people do take the time and they write these kind reviews. About our pizza, and about ones, our staff. There, there's some exactly. that are in there that are nice. There and, are. I you know. know. Five, six hundred word reviews it's that people amazing. are legitimately talking about the ingredients, the yeah. relationship. You know, uh, if, if Sam is working, oh, you know, the owner, incredibly humble, nice, you know, amazing food. I think that, you know, one of the, one of the big factors that makes your food so good is the fact that the two of you love doing it. Oh, absolutely. And it, we and, do love being you know, there. I, and there's, there's an old, there's an old adage. My mother used to tell me, like, my best food comes out when I'm in a bad mood. And, you know, it's funny because at the end of the day, how you go into it affects how it will come out. So if you go into it and you're happy with it right. and you love it, it's it's going to show. Absolutely. And I think that's something that, you know, you guys demonstrate tremendously. You guys love what you do. Yeah, we do. I do. And there you know, is I, I, that- I told one – I tell everybody, I, say, I try to make every pizza – Better than the last one that I made. I don't ever want to hear from anyone that, oh, that's good enough. Mm-hmm. Well, Nothing, that's so funny. You it in Nothing is yeah, good exactly. enough. Everything funny. has to be the best as it could be. That's just how I, I do things. I, you know, one day, one of the guys I used to have working for me, he said to me, I don't want about it. it was, it's good enough. I said, ho, ho, ho. It's not good enough. My name is on that box. It's not good enough. It has to be to the best that we can make it. That's and it. That's how I, that's how we are. I agree. And this morning I posted on a quote on Instagram and I don't want to get it wrong, but I don't have my phone to read it to you, but it was from St. Francis. Yep. I saw and that. it said, when you do a task with your hands, you're a laborer. When you do a task with your hands and your head, you're a craftsman. And when you do a craft with your hands, your head, and your heart, you're an artist. So at that level is where I think my husband is at this point, because he does put his heart into everything he does, especially with Severio's, more than anything I've ever seen before. And I'm very proud of him um, because he is very passionate about what he does there and the products he makes there. And he's proud that our family is part of it. He is. Which is amazing that you have most of your family 
in in, in they're in there, there all the time. Either but, they're know. there to lend a hand, or they're there for the babies to have pizza, or they're there just to see us because we're there all the time. Because you know, family so, members they'll be like, oh, "I don't want to do that," or "Right, oh, yeah. I don't want to do right. it to get no, into this." No, it's great. Everybody helps. They yeah, so I, I really just um, I have to applaud my husband because he is um, the hardest working man I've ever seen. And he's always doing it with a smile. Even when he doesn't feel good, he's there. And nobody would know he doesn't feel great, but he's still there doing what he's got to do. That's right. Um, and he is um, just one of a one of a kind. And really, um, I think it's a labor of love that he does there. And he really loves making the pizza for everyone. He loves seeing the people come in with their families. Um, and it's, it's really a blessing to be able to do this together. Um, the philosophy of Severio's was from about, 10 years ago now, I think our Severio's brand started in 2008 because we bottled our barbecue sauce with the hopes to make um, gourmet burgers a reality. But our standard is so high that we had a difficult time finding um, a USDA plant. And that Sam would just grind his own meat every day. Well, we'll if we could, for, for 14 hours <laughs> if we could, we would, but we <laughs> don't have a USDA stamp. So, yeah, absolutely. and you'd be surprised that we went and looked and there was nothing that you I would say three or four I would let them do my hamburgers. They yep. first would not use the cut of meat we wanted. Um, the facilities were a little bit frightening and I was not going to put my name on that product. That's scary. Yeah, it is. So we shifted gears. It took us a long time to get to realize that it won't be burgers. It'll be pizza. But the brand was established in 2008. And the whole philosophy behind Severios, I'm going to let you know what it is, is uh, we wanted families to come together around a table, a small table, a big table, any table that we could offer, and just get back to eating dinner together as a family. That's right. Just to sit close talk about their day, laugh, learn something new about each other, enjoy a a home-cooked meal like we're serving. Like for me, like I said before, you coming in, you're part of my family, you're going to eat like my family eats. So that's the philosophy behind Severios, to bring families together, to enjoy a meal, spend time together, and reconnect with your family. That's Severios in a nutshell. So we're hoping that people who are listening to your podcast and people who are viewing our Instagram and our Facebook, that they come and be part of that philosophy just to be together and enjoy a good meal and enjoy um, just being together. Well, I think that with what you were saying before about, you know, doing barbecue sauce or doing stuff like that, have you, are you still interested in going beyond pizza? And when I say that, I mean, um, making a cookbook or, mm-hmm. you know, doing a salad dressing or doing something within, within the confines of what you're selling. Of or course. Is that, is that still on the table? That's always, we still do produce our barbecue sauce that we sell in the, in the butcher shop because it makes sense. We sell meat. We sell barbecue sauce. There we go. He makes his gourmet burgers fresh. They sell there. So they're not in the packaging like we wanted, but we still make them and they're still offered in the, in A&S. Um, but as far as ex- an extension of what else we can do, there's always that possibility. I want to do cooking class. So I have a whole list of people that are waiting for me to say, today's the day, we're going to do a cooking class. So I have that as a vision for Severios and for the pork store. Also, um, when we do expand the business, I will definitely be doing pasta, pasta dinner, pasta night, pastas in general, um, because our sauces are just off the hook, ridiculous and fresh. So I think a cookbook would kill a it. Cookbook for you guys. would be great era, too. In the era of self-publishing now, where you sure. can self-publish, you can publish it yourselves, right? And get it out there mm-hmm. just to try it out. Yeah, you know, sure. Get, why not? Do a do a you know fifty page ebook, put it right. on Amazon, charge ninety nine cents, or hey, if you guys want more, and you could use it as a litmus test and just see because I think that. The one of the things that sets you apart from so many others is the high quality ingredients, but just the way that you apply everything. I mean, when you guys posted recently that you were doing a buffalo chicken pizza, where are you going to go? You see a a, a pizza <laughs> making a buffalo chicken pizza, you know, in an oven that's imported from Nick. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, yes. It was. Cause. 
I, honestly, one of the most popular weekly specials yeah. that we've ever done is that Buffalo Chicken Pizza. That's what it happens. is. Our version. I tell everybody, it's our version of Buffalo Chicken Pizza. It's and not like the regular Buffalo Chicken Pizza. It's our version of it. Um, it's just from the good. start, from like the chicken cutlets, just that yep. itself. They're delicious, just freshly breaded and fried. It's not like it's an old chicken cutlet that we have left over that nope. we're throwing on a pizza. No, nope. they're all made fresh, perfect that morning and diced up by hand and then dressed with the buffalo buffalo sauce that he created. And it's just, um, it's really something. And of course, with our homemade mozzarella is the base. You can't go wrong with that. Nope, absolutely so not. I saw it and uh, I was like, wow, that's that's tremendous. And like I said, I looked at it from that that deeper perspective where I said, listen, you got you got all these imported ingredients and it's being put into buffalo chicken. You know, like you're putting <laughs> it, it into good. like you're putting it into it bar really food, you know. Like, and when you look at it, you say to yourself, Really? And I saw it in my draw, I was like, Yes. Because yeah. what happens is when you do something like that and, and you flex those creative muscles, people go, Oh well, it just brings well, it I to know a I different can go level. There and I can get yeah. you know, a couple of buffalo pies, you know, that that but this that, week's secret is we're having a a barbecue chicken pizza this week. Mm-hmm. There we go. And uh, so that'll be on tomorrow's menu. I nice. shared this secret and on the story uh, already, our Instagram you story. Know what? <laughs> I've been toying with this buffalo sauce. Yeah. This, I'm sorry, this, this barbecue. barbecue sauce. It's not my barbecue sauce that I have in, in the store. It's another one that I made just for pizza. Nice. And it's really good. It's good. We've been eating it. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I probably had three of them already since Friday. <laughs> and... Uh, it's really good. It's good. I'm looking forward to that one this week. So that'll be this week's special. It'll be it'll be yummy. I'm sure everyone will yeah, like it. I think so. Yeah. And then I might do a poll, buffalo or barbecue. I think and just have good. it fun, you know? I think so. I think that what you you know, if it reaches a point where the popularity of each go head to head, you might want to add it as a menu item. Yeah, everyone or wants add it, it as a or, or or just for fun. You know, make it like a like a like a secret signature that only you know people that are in the know come in and they sure. go, listen, Absolutely. I need that thing, Dang. <laughs> you know, or or hey, you know, um, today's the day, or or it's yeah. football day. It's so funny because we have say the password. Uh, we it. have a couple. We have a couple of families that have been coming in since the start, like since we first opened the doors. So they basically get whatever pizza they exactly. want. Exactly, they get. The- so we have. Ed's family comes in. They get their potato croquette pizza. Nice. They get that. Time. We, anytime we see them pulling up, we already know. Let's cut up those potato croquettes fresh because they. I know that that's what they want. Um, we have another family that comes in and they love the hot and spicy. So when we see them, we're like, okay, they want the height. We know. So it's more often than not, we know what they want before they come in. That's how you craft so. good relationships. Yeah. That right there. That right. again, lost art form. People, right. Hey, if you come in here three times a week, I I should know that when I see your face three times a week. Right. That this we, is what we you're know eating. not only what kind of pizza they want, we know what they're drinking. Yeah. See. It's... So they sit at the table and it, the plates put down, the silver put down, and so is their drink. See? So they know ahead of time. We the kids are great. That no, we we know you know, and we have this one family that comes every week from Hewlett. There's a husband and wife and the mom, and they get the same three pies: two margaritas and a fig. Without prosciutto. So nice we, people. and they get a bottle of wine every week and they're lovely and they're just, uh, they're there every Such week. Such nice people. Yeah, they're awesome. So, and we know what they like. And it's great that they drive all the way from Hewlett on a Sunday. That's not an easy trip to make. Nope. Um, and we appreciate that they do come every week. They don't miss a week. They're there. So we look forward to them. Uh, it's pretty awesome. We have, um, customers that become friends, yeah. you know, I mean, we've had, them join us here for barbecues because we had uh, the Severios kids for a summer barbecue every year. We have a summer barbecue for the staff and we invited our friend Jim, who's like part of the extended family. So we invited him to come and join us and he's, he's super. So he's yeah. Jim, the shot guy. He makes all these different shots and brings us jello shots and he's just super. He made us zucchini bread and you know, he's just, he's awesome. So nice we're, he's a great guy. So we, you know, we're, we're very, very lucky with all the people that come in. Uh, before we switch gears, I did want to ask, if someone was looking to get into this industry, what words of wisdom would you pass on? Go to school, learn the right way. Don't take a shortcut because it's only going to bite you in the butt. And don't skimp on your ingredients. Give good ingredients. It's hard to screw up something if everything you're putting on that pie is quality ingredient. There you go. 
I, I can agree with that. You know? I would say my one piece of advice would be the advice that my father's given us our whole life is to um, stand by your product. Like stand by what you're making. Make sure it's the best that you could possibly mm-hmm. make it and um, offer it to everyone always and with a, a smile and um, just stand by your product. And if God forbid there is an issue, you, you own it, you know. Things happen, yeah. you know. It's 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 a fine Things line by, uh, especially with this wood burning oven that we have. It's a fine line between crisp and burnt. Like people come in, they want it well done. So we're like, okay, but I don't offer anything. Heads up, right. I don't right. offer anything burnt. It's only fifteen seconds That's from it. well done right. to burnt. But That's for me, I won't. If a pie needs to be remade, it's remade. If it's too well done for me, I'm not serving it. Right. But some people ask for it. Well done. Yep. So I sometimes have to, they're like, no, they want it. Like what, we got one kid that comes every burn week. Kid, burn it. <laughs> oh my kid God. comes in every week and excuse my language. He goes to me, he goes, hey, Margarita, burn that shit. Yeah. That's what I tell he you. He wants it like he black and burn burnt. Shit. And then you bring it out to him and he goes, wow, that's sexy. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. And he's literally at our, at, and he goes, at, almost every sexy. day, if not every other day, yeah. he's having pizza. And God bless him. He's a sweetheart. And when he leaves, but he, he goes, wants it I'll burnt. see you in a few hours. See you in a few hours. I'll see you tomorrow. That's crazy. <laughs> it's facts. It's the truth. And it's, um, but you know, that would be my advice is stand behind your product a hundred percent. Stand behind it. Um, you know, give a quality, quality, he said quality ingredients, a quality product and stand behind it a hundred percent. Nice. You know, an old man, Said something to me one time, you know, six in your mind, certain things. He goes, no, if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. Absolutely. And you know something? Mm-hmm. It's so true. Mm-hmm. You'll never see me complain. I don't complain. I don't say, oh, my God, or I have to go to work tomorrow. Nope. It never happened. Because it's fun, and that's what I it- enjoy doing what I do. Well, the, the next part of, uh, of the show we like to do, we call it the hot seat. We just... A little rapid fire questions. Right. Okay. Um, you know, I, given, given that, you know, I was going to interview you guys, I made some adjustments. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite place to eat that's not your own establishment? Mine? Yep. Campagnola's in Manhattan. Okay. And Emily? He stole mine, but I'll have to say, still in Manhattan, uh, Mr. Chow, Chinese food. Okay. And with that said, What's the best meal you've ever had? Oh, I know where mine is. I'm going <laughs> first. The best meal we ever ate was at Castello de Nero. Oh, you just stole mine. That's okay. In <laughs> Tuscany, it was a Michelin star restaurant, La Torre restaurant in Castel de Nero Resort and Spa. It was the best meal we ever ate hands down from start to finish. And one day we will go back and <laughs> have that meal again fantastic service atmosphere the food was just beyond all in tuscany nice now you want me to go yeah of course she's still in my okay well, we have another well, one i say another one i know which one you're gonna Il say that's, okay. that's the other one il molino i think it was in the taj mahal uh-huh in Trump AC. taj mahal in atlantic city wow we went there my wife and i and we had dinner and uh Il Molino was a very good, a, I think there was two or three of them, I believe. And the one that we ate in, in Taj Mahal, that was we a, had great, a great, meal. great meal. That was a wonderful meal. Nice. All right. Now we'll simplify it a little bit. What's your comfort food of choice? <laughs> we both have the same one. What do you eat? Go ahead. You go first. Well, our go-to thing to eat is ice cream. Yeah. 100% ice cream, butter crunch from Friendly's. Nice. Okay. You? Yes, butter crunch and butter <laughs> pecan ice cream. Nice. That's, yes, that's, that's a hell of a comfort thing. food. Uh-huh. That is my our thing. Ice cream. And even my granddaughter, Gia Bella. <laughs> she loves ice cream too. Nice. Now, I'm, people are always going to, well, I'm sure someone's going to ask this, so I beat them to the punch. What makes a perfect meatball? Okay, well, that's all, <laughs> that's all me. Because I have my mother's recipe you know, and what, she's what you made the best meatballs. Me- they were perfect. They, my mother's meatballs were the best, but mine are a close second. Um, I'm going to give you the, the inside secret to the perfect meatball. Shoot. So everyone has their philosophy on meats. So fine. You mix your meat however you want. Yep. You meatball know. mix. Right. Half of this, half that, or a third of this and third of that, whatever, whatever. You take your meat, but the clutch ingredient is the round brick oven bread. Cut it in half. Scoop out all the inside, the white part yep. of it. Soak it in water and then squeeze it out. 
Nice. It's not milk. It's nope. just warm water, warm water, and then cold water, whatever water, and just put it in your meatballs. I put a ton of cheese. But you always break the bread up. Really, yeah, small. Really small. I right. use um, fresh parsley. Always fresh parsley. Fresh garlic. There you go. Um, eggs, cheese, parsley. That's it. And um, you have to fry them or bake them. You know, just don't kill them. They don't have to be like fried. Well, what do you mine prefer? Are fr- fried, my, fried, fried, fried or well, baked? Fried. I like fried. You fried? Yes. Absolutely. I'm no, fried like too. Fried. Man, I'm fried. There we it go. It has to be fried, but you know, everyone bakes their meatballs now to be healthier. They do. Yep. But I fry mine when I make sauce. It's, he asked it's, for the perfect meatball. All right. He didn't say <laughs> a meatball. All right. So let's, the perfect meatball is fried, but you don't have to fry it to death because it's going to cook in the, in the gravy. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What's something that you've purchased recently that's less than $100 that has made your life either easier or just more enjoyable? Oh, boy. Less, less than, than 100, 100 Less than 100 bucks. Pertaining to work? Anything. Whatever. Whatever. What's something that you just bought? Less than 100 bucks. They were just like, ah. Okay. This, this, this was worth buying. Okay. Do worth- you really want to know what sure. I bought that was less than $100? Shoot. I bought a pair of Crocs. Really? They were, I think, 35 bucks. They are the best sandals I've ever bought. I wear them to work. They're my work sandals. Listen, if it Crocs. works for Mario Batali, it works for you. You know, I didn't even think of, I didn't even think of that, but I just bought them by chance right. and I said, Oh my God, they're so comfortable. They're amazing. So I wear them to work. But now that the winter's rolling, I have to find a good pair of like winter footwear. Um, my wife my likes see. Minnetonka moccasins. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. They're furry inside. She loves that. But can I wear them to work? They might be a mess with the flower. Yeah. That's well, why I like have the Crocs. A Peter pair. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the Crocs because they're plastic. I could rinse them off. That's it. But they were the best. Less than a hundred dollar purchase I bought that made me very very happy and nice. my feet too. What about you? What'd you buy? But you're. I know. Well, it was know, more than a hundred dollars. More hundred dollars. It was. Uh, but if I was say I bought something less than a hundred dollars, because usually I don't spend. Less than a hundred dollars for some reason. Everything, but, everything costs more. Yeah. I, I, I'm with you, but, but there's gotta be. I want to say my smart switches that I installed myself ah, in yes. my house. Those are those are very nice. I saw those when I walked in. Yeah, very cool. They're smart switches. They are cool. Nice. All I say is Alexa. Yep. Alexa, good night. And now we're sitting in the dark. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that you, you know, my my wife. I bought I bought an Alexa, and I said, she goes, I don't know why you're buying this thing. Oh. I don't get why why we need this. Uh oh. Uh, Hold on. <laughs> it took it took a week and I hear her Alexa, what's the weather for tomorrow? Yeah. Alexa? And, there you go. Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, it's We're okay. Use the switches. <laughs> there you go. Alexa's being stubborn tonight. No, but but it's it's funny because when I did that and I bought it, she's like, I don't get it. But because that's how it goes and then now I hear her. What's the weather? Set an alarm. Yeah, do it, this, it, we do did that. the alarm for the first time a couple of weeks ago. It was funny ago. because uh, Emily goes, "Oh, we're going to put these switches in. What are you going to do those switches?" You'll so see. I mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. I Good. put them in myself. Yeah, they're and really I, cool. I enjoyed it. That's those right. are uh, Lutron switches. Right? Yes, they are. Good. Very cool. Because I'm sure I'm sure someone's going to ask. Now I know you know this is an easy one. I've gone I've gone to your establishment. There's always nice music playing in the background. What do you listen to when you work? When I work, yeah, like what's I playing? Like, what's your what's the soundtrack to your work day? My favorite song, my favorite music, or what's playing in the store? Uh, Let me ask you either, that question. Either, either or. My favorite music is classic disco music. Okay. And at on a Friday night, like after five o'clock, six o'clock, we put that on in the store because people come in and they really enjoy, they enjoy it. Enjoy that. Nice. And then we get a lot of compliments about, about our the music. music. And they say, sure. "Well, I like the music in this place." That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. And then sometimes, of course, we, we go to Frank Sinatra oh, and all say. the oldies, the store, Dean Martin. Frank never hurts. You know, Dean Martin we the listen to. Music. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. The music is always good. Nice. And of course, we, it wouldn't be toys and tech without talking about toys at least briefly. Um, what was your favorite toy as a kid? Oh, gosh. My favorite toy as a kid. Hmm. I had Barbies. But the one Barbie, if I had to pick the one Barbie, actually, there's a few Barbies I have to talk about, because one wasn't wasn't really a traditional Barbie. It was the Cher Barbie doll. I had Cher. They're worth a lot of money. I, I think I still have her. 
<laughs> those are, those she are may not have clothes on. <laughs> she might be a naked share, but I think I still have her in my parents' garage. So I had a share Barbie doll. I had Tuesday Taylor, who had like a scalp that you could flip blonde hair or black hair. It was kind of weird. But Holy cow. <laughs> Tuesday Taylor. And then there was like this pioneer girl, Jody. She was a pioneer doll. Wow. I had okay. a lot of Barbie dolls, like dolls that I just always played with dolls. So that's what I played with as a kid. Sam? Mine would probably be Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Uh-huh. Oh, I love those. I, anytime they're in a store and they do all the different variations. Now, yeah. like they did a, a Batman and Superman pair, which um, they gave us to give away. And I had to crack it open. I'm sure you Me and rocked. my son just, I just got one. Even my son were playing about it's a month fun. ago. So nice. I still play with them. Nice. All right. So Sam and Emily, you've made it through the hot seat. And All right. you've shared the toys and tech that allow you to run your business. Um, I'm very grateful that you guys took the time out to chop it up with us. And last but not least, where can people find you guys on the internet? On the internet, our website is severiospizza.com. So our menu is available there. Um, on Instagram, we are at severios underscore authentic underscore pizza. And as well as Facebook, that's our Facebook handle too. Awesome. Thank you both for chopping it up with us and sharing the toys and tech of your trade. Thank you. I'll just add one more thing if I, if I may. Of course. This is September and it is. Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So we do do a collection at Severio's for St. Jude's. So if anyone is in the general area or would like to donate to St. Jude's, they could stop by, make a donation, or they could send a check made out to St. Jude's to the store um, at 929 Broadway in Massapequa and address it to me. And um, I will gladly submit your donation along with ours. I do it yearly. Our checks go in December 15th every year. And our goal is $5,000 a year. So far, this is our seventh year. And right now, with just the collections from January to, to date, we have $2,500 already. Wow. So that's before my initial push that I do right before Thanksgiving where I send out my donation letters. So we're already halfway there. So I think we're going to exceed our our goal for this year so and also thank you very much for having us tonight thank you appreciate it thank, thank you, you guys much. that concludes our interview with sam and emily cataldo from severio's pizza room to find out more about severio's pizza room make sure to give them a follow on instagram check them out on facebook and of course visit their website links for that will be in the show notes for this episode Thank you guys for checking out episode two of Toys and Tech of the Trade. If you have any questions, concerns, or would like to be a guest on a future episode of Toys and Tech of the Trade, you can email me, rich at rageworks.net, and you can also use the contact form on the site, rageworks.net, as well. You can find the Rageworks Network on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio, and you can find Toys and Tech of the Trade on iTunes. Last but not least, if you really enjoyed this episode, please take a moment and give it a rating on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. To find out more about Rageworks, as always, visit us at rageworks.net. Thank you guys for listening. We're out of here. Peace. Peace.